Yes. The very successful attorney parked his brand new Bentley in front of his office, ready to show it off to his colleagues. As he was getting out, a truck came along too closely and completely tore off the driver's door. Fortunately, a cop in a police car was close enough to see the accident and pulled up behind the Bentley with his lights flashing. Before the cop had a chance to ask any questions, the attorney started screaming hysterically about his Bentley, which he had just purchased the day before. It was completely ruined and would never be the same no matter how any car body shop tried to make it new again. After the lawyer finally wound down from his rant, the cop shook his head in disbelief. I cannot believe how materialistic you are. <clears throat> Where are we here? I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't believe how materialistic you lawyers are, he said. You are so focused on your possessions that you neglect the most important things in life. How can you say such a thing, asked the lawyer. The cop replied, don't you even realize that your left arm is missing? It was severed by the truck door. Oh my God, screamed the lawyer, my Rolex. Let's get a Bible. Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter 2, let's read verses 5 to 8. Yeah. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Yeah. I know some of you have had an awesome week. Because you've shared some of those stories with me of what's gone on in your lives this week. And others of you have had some, well, very trying or difficult times this past week, and there again you have shared those with me, and I appreciate that in both the good times and the bad. The first five starts out with, let this mind, it doesn't say if you're having a good day, and it doesn't say or if you're having a bad day, it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. First, to give you some idea of what is going on continuously in the brain and spinal cord, I want to give you this little thing to visualize. Try to imagine 1,000 telephone switchboards, each big enough to service a city the size of New York, all going at full speed, receiving and transmitting requests, questions, and orders, and only God can reduce such complexity to three pints of gray matter and put it in something as small as a human brain. Isn't that amazing what God can do? The human brain or the mind of man is utterly, utterly amazing. Now, to put that into perspective of what I just told you about the brain, Matthew chapter 23, verses 30, or chapter 22, verses 37 and 38, says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, some of you are probably asking, well, how does that illustration fit the scripture? And first of all, this scripture just took on a brand new meaning to me. God wants us to love Him with everything that you've got. Amen. Not just part of you. He wants everything. He wants your complete and total devotion. 
And that love is enough to cover 1,000 New York cities. Think about that for, for just a minute. The love that God wants from you is so great. Some of us have problems just loving the person that might be sitting next to you this morning. Now, I'm not trying to meddle a little bit. I don't want to stir anything up here this morning. Some of us have problems loving just our neighbor. I, I can tell I'm touching some nerves this morning. <laughs> but loving God with all that you've got in you is the first and greatest commandment. When I say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, tells me this. We need to think like Christ thinks. We need to act like Christ acts. We need to imitate Christ. In other words, we need to do everything as though Christ was in us, doing us. We need to eat, breathe, sleep, our walk with God. Now you're, you're going, oh, Pastor, you are radical. <laughs> you are so radical. I thought that those things were just for the preacher to do. <laughs> no, that's for everyone. But as a believer in God, there are plenty of people in the world today that will judge you based on their perception of a Christian. Okay? Have an amen on that one? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, many of you have probably been told a Christian wouldn't do that. Anyone hear that comment before? <laughs> many of you have probably said a Christian would do that. When you look at your brother or your sister in the Lord, you, you go, man, you can't do that. A Christian doesn't do that. Please remember this one thing. Christians are not perfect, but they are forgiven. Christians, however, should be striving to be Christ-like. A driver did the right thing, stopping at the crosswalk, even though he could have beaten the red light, or she could have beaten the red light by accelerating through the intersection. The tailgating woman behind him went ballistic, pounding on her horn and screaming in frustration as she missed her chance to drive through the intersection with him. Still in mid ranch she heard a tap on her window and looked up into the face of a very serious police officer. The officer ordered her to exit her car with her hands up. He took her to the police station where she was searched, fingerprinted, photographed, and placed in a cell. After a couple of hours, a policeman approached the cell and opened the door. She was escorted back to the booking desk where the arresting officer was waiting with her personal belongings. He said, I'm awfully sorry for this mistake. You see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn, flipping the guy off in front of you, and crossing and cussing like a blue streak. And I noticed the Choose Life license plate holder, the What Would Jesus Do bumper sticker, the Follow Me to Sunday School bumper sticker, and the chrome-plated Christian fish on your trunk. Naturally, I assumed your car had been stolen. <laughs> Now, with that laughter, I wonder how many of you are laughing because that's happened to you. When people look at us, what do they see? Do they see somebody with the mind of Christ? Do they see someone with the desire to be like Christ? And as we dig into the scripture about the mind of Christ, 
how do we react to situations in life? And I'm sure as I stand here this morning, and if I paused and let some silence happen, the wheels would be turning in your minds and going, oh man, God, I know I shouldn't have done that the other day. You remember, Lord, that situation that, yeah, I got put on hold for, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. And maybe I shouldn't have reacted quite like that. How do we react to situations in life? Thank you, Jesus. When you come up against something you just don't know how to handle, what do you do? How do you react? A phrase that became popular many, many years ago should still be popular today. Or at least put into action today is this. What would Jesus do? It was a fad that came into being. What would Jesus do? And then all of a sudden it just dropped off and nobody said it anymore. But what would Jesus do? How would Jesus react in a situation if you're driving down the freeway and you get cut off? I believe this story that I told you moments ago would have turned out totally different if she had a thought for a moment. Say, God, how would you react in this state, in this situation? Should I really be cussing at him? Should I really be flipping him off? Now, you know, some of those things you don't even need to ask. But if Jesus hadn't been sitting next to her in the front seat, let's move on. Well, he could have struck him with lightning. Maybe. That's not Oftentimes I think that we would react totally differently if Jesus walked in the door. I think she would have acted differently. Sometimes I hear a very legitimate question. Craig, I really don't know how I would react. I really don't know what I should do. Recently I had someone come to me that was having an issue with someone and I gave them what I felt was a word of wisdom from the, from the Bible. And the response was something like this. But you don't really know what they did to me. And how much it hurt me. I'm just going to give them a piece of my mind anyway. Now they didn't have that last part, but that's how they reacted. You come for advice. You get godly advice. And then choose to, oh well. That's Pastor, you don't know. You don't know what they did. But really, what would Jesus do? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. In other words, we don't think like Christ did. We don't react like he did, but that's how we need to be. We need to put his life into action in our life. You see, we just don't think the way God does. To have the mind of Christ, we need to be saying, God, I want to think the way that you do. I want to react in situations the way that you would. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. God, renew my mind. Make it to function the way and think the way that you think, Lord. And I pray that our minds are renewed in Christ. A renewed mind is one that is concerned with the will of God. It's one that knows what is good and acceptable according to the will of God. Our government has tried to legislate morality. It has tried to make things legal. It's tried to make many things legal. But just because something is legal does not make it right. I have had Christians come to me and tell me, but it's legal. It's okay. Friends, go to the Word of God. Go to the Word of God. Don't let society make you think something is right when you know it's not according to God's Word. I read Matthew chapter 22, 37 and 38 earlier. And the same thing is said in Luke chapter 12, or 10, verse 27. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And this is the part that Luke adds. And your neighbor, anyone want to finish it? As yourself. Wow. <laughs> Shall I finish right now before I get in trouble? <laughs> we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is going to be a good one. We're to love our employers. <laughs> no, I didn't just say that. I know that this is difficult for a lot of us, especially when we are treated incorrectly, when we're treated wrong. When your neighbors treat you wrong. When your employer treats you wrong. They become difficult situations to get through. The Bible doesn't say to love your neighbor as yourself. If... And if you see that in the scripture, then you need to show me the version that you read. It doesn't say to love your neighbor as yourself if they always treat you right, or if they always do what you want, or if they agree with you on everything. I don't have to love them if they're arguing with me. If we're having a dispute, everything that comes into or out of our minds should reflect our love for God. And I'm going to say something here. It's not a joke. It's not a, a story. I've had numerous people in my life that have wanted to chew me out and spit me out and do me wrong. But I'm going to tell you, I love everyone. I have had people tell me, how can you do that? How can you love them? And the reason is, is because Christ did. If you look at every person as a person that has a soul that God loves, it changes your outlook. It changes your perspective on things. Another area of the mind of Christ is, is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will what? direct your path. We need to put our trust in God. If you're not a Christian, you really have nothing to trust in but yourself. 
You've heard me say it numerous times. God's got everything under control. And when you trust in God, you trust in the one who created this universe. He's the one in charge. Let him handle every situation in your life. Don't take it up yourself. Let God handle it. We need, as having the mind of Christ, we will put our trust in Him. Here's what I really like in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. And verse 5 and the first half of verse 6 tells us what we need to do. And then in the second half of verse 6 is a promise. If you follow God's instructions, it says God will direct your paths. So how do you know if you're in the will of God? If you're doing what the scripture says. Because you know he's going to direct your steps. A man accompanied his friend home for dinner and was impressed by the way he entered the house. Asked his wife how her day went and told her she looked pretty. Then when they embraced, she served dinner. After they ate, the husband complimented his wife on the meal and thanked her for it. When the two fellows were alone, the visitor asked, he said, why do you treat your wife so well? Quit looking over at Linda. Your eyes are supposed to be this way. He said, because she deserves it, and it makes her marriage happier, replied the host. Impressed, the visitor decided to adopt the idea. Arriving home, he embraced his wife and exclaimed, You look wonderful. For good measure, he added, Sweetheart, I am the luckiest guy in the world. His wife, amazed, burst into tears. Bewildered, he asked her, What in the world's the matter? She wept, What a day. Billy fought at school, the refrigerator quit, spoiled the groceries, and now you come home drunk. <laughs> she didn't tell me that. <laughs> the last part of the message here on the mind of Christ this morning is this. We need to have a mind that will encourage others. We need to build each other up. We need to encourage each other. The example has already been set. It's found in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. It says, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God spoke to his own son, saying, I am well pleased, and he announced it in the heavenlies. This is my beloved son, of whom I am well pleased. I think of all of us would like to have something like that said about us. I've watched many people go through life always being put down very seldom being encouraged. You talk to any school teacher in the system, they could name numerous kids that they see come through their classrooms in the very same way. And when we see that happening, we need to turn that around. Take the time to encourage a member of your family. Take the time to encourage your neighbor or one of your co-workers. I believe as you do this, your Heavenly Father will say to you, I am well pleased. In fact, Romans chapter 12, verses 10 to 21 gives us more instruction along this line. And I want to read that this morning as we come close to closing. Romans chapter 12, verses 10 to 21. Says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. 
not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. You, you did hear that, right? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Yeah. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. I'm going to speak to you on that another day, but I just want to put it this way. Right there it says, I'm going to fight your battles. I am the one that's going to fight your battles. You don't need to deal with it. Your job is to love them no matter what. God takes care of the judgment. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, yeah, you're, we're reading in the same, same version here. If your enemy is re hungry, feed him. feed him. If he is thirsty, for in so doing, you will heat coals of fire on his head. Do not become, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil. Now you talk about the mind of Christ, it goes totally against how we normally think, right? But as you do these things, God will bless you. As you follow after Christ and you seek to have the mind of Christ, he will direct your steps. So the question I want to ask you this morning is, so, where is your mind? Where is your mind? No response to <laughs> Not yet. I pray as a Christian that we seek to have the mind of Christ. Active. 